Hi, it's Karen here. Thank you for joining me. Today I thought we would paint this uh, little whimsy purple uh, painting, watercolour painting. Um, inspiration has been is coming from the pebbles on the beach. I've been spending a bit of time uh, down there. Now the evenings are getting lighter. Um, and I just thought I love purple. So let's limit the palette right down and let's paint this um, cute little watercolour. So I'm just going to set this aside and let's get started. As always, I'll put all the materials that I use in the description below. Um, so you've got a, um, so you, you can see what I've been using. Okay, so here's my watercolour paper. Now, I'm going to just go into my purple and I'm just going to do some really nice stone shapes. Now, I've got quite a lot of paint on my, on my brush and I'm kind of just moving it about. Now, I'm not paying too much attention um, to my stone shapes, but I am keeping my brush, um, the belly of my brush, filled with quite a lot of water because I kind of want to get um, as much fluid into the painting as I can. Um, and I'm literally just, because I loaded my brush up very well, um, I'm just borrowing it from uh, the top stone. And it's as easy as that. Let's just keep moving this paint around with our water. Now you can do the sh whatever shape that you, you like, but um, as I said, uh, earlier um this when the stones are wet they just have got these beautiful colors and um i was struck by these russet purpley colors on our beach and i just thought yeah i really like that so that's my inspiration for this um tutorial today and um, so i'm just going to dip the tip of my brush in and just literally dab just the tip and I'm just going to drop in some lovely creamier um, consistency of paint into my wet um, into my wet stones so if you need to put a little bit more water yeah just just drop it in we're just having fun we're just laying this this color down straight from the pan no color mixing and let's just drop it in and just see what interesting marks and and um, effects we're going to get with the paint reacting to the paper and to the watercolor um, the water with the watercolor okay now if you want to you can get some tissue and you could scrunch a bit of tissue up it's a, quite a big bit so i'm just going to get a little bit of tissue and i'm just gonna just dab it just just dab it on and that gives us some really nice interesting marks and when that dries that will give us a really nice effect um, I've done one earlier because I'm going to set this one aside now so I can show you the next stage. So I'm just going to set that one aside and this is one that's now thoroughly dry. Um, and now we go on to, the, on to the next stage. And this stage I'm going to be using my uh, Fabia Castell um, a little um, pigment brush. Um, pen excuse me it's the zero zero point five so and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make some nice big and small 
circles. Now, you can go any direction that you want. And if you've got a little bit of gap in between, yeah, just fill them, just fill them in. And we get this, we get this nice effect. Now, you can take yours as far um, along or down as you want onto your purple stone. It's entirely up to you. Um, but we're just kind of anchoring our big stone, our big stones onto um, the little stones are kind of what you would find in a rock pool, I guess. But we're abstracting this. We're just making it into a nice abstracted watercolour but um and so you can take it down as far or as least as you want now i'm going to anchor these two together because i think that will work really well and i'm just putting in these little circular Well, they're kind of oval, really, aren't they? Doodles. They're really easy, lovely doodles. And it it pulls your painting together. Okay, so any little spaces you've got, just put your your little your little stones in. Okay. Um let's just put I'm just going to anchor that or attach that to the stone. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And I'm just going to put a little, a little one in here. And maybe a couple that's nestling down here. Okay, so that now brings all the all the elements together our big stones and our little doodles in the in the middle now i'm going to use my japanese watercolor brush and i'm just going to activate my uh, my metallic paints now i absolutely adore um, the classic gold but i have got the antique gold now or some some pans are called Aztec gold. Now this is a very, very rich colour. Um, I don't know whether you can see that very well. But I think I used, on the one that I showed you earlier, I used the classic gold. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try the, um, the antique gold now. And then we can have a look and see which one we think is better. So... All I'm doing, you can get your pencil if you if you prefer and you can get your pencil and you can mark in where you want your your leaves to go because we're, we're using leaves today as our focal point. So it's up to you. You can either go freehand or um, you just go straight into the pan and go direct work directly onto your work i'm going to work directly onto my work and i'm just going to do a nice confident movement there and just bring it up a little bit and then i'm just going to do a leaf shape and we're going to take that one in the middle and then i'm just going to do these couple of um lines in the in the leaf I'm not going to fill the whole of the leaf up. So again, I've um, just activated nice and creamy work your metallics and then just take the excess off. And then with the very tip of your brush, you can just, again, And then just work work your way down. Um, I hope you can, I hope it, the camera's picking it up for you and you can see um, 
this lovely gold. Just again. Now you can put as many leaves on as you want. I like to just do my centre stroke on my leaf because I think it helps me balance the, the lines that I'm doing. Again here, I'm just going to swizzle my work round and I'm going to just do a nice, a nice line there. And let's go off the page on this one, off the stone, through the middle, and then just do the lines through like that. Okay. And again, really nice, easy leaf shapes. And just work your way around through the middle. Now you can put as many leaf shapes in as you like you can thicken up your leaf shape if you want to it just didn't catch there so I'm going to put some more water to keep me nice and fluid and um, I think I'm gonna put a nice leaf in there in the middle and then how about one here again And I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm just, I think, just bring that up and I'm just going to take that up. Just a bit wibbly there. I think you will know by now I haven't got a very steady hand. Um, I do hope the camera's picking this up. This, got, um, this um, antique gold is, is just beautiful. It really is. Um, I think I just put one in there and then finally I'm just going to put these lovely little gold accents because normally I'd like to splatter but um, I think we need to be a little bit more controlled and not splatter because it'll go everywhere and probably not in the places where I'd like it to go. Um, yeah, let's put some. I think this this gold is just so gorgeous with the with the purple. They like each other a lot, don't they? Let's let's put that one in there. Or maybe one in there. Let's. Uh, No, I think that's I think that's enough. Um, I could keep going on and on, really. I, I just set my brushes to one side, and I'll bring the other one back in so you can see, and you can see the two different um, the two different golds. Now, um, I must say I do like the classic gold. Um, but the but the antique gold is nice as is nice too. Um, let me know what you think, which one you prefer, and um, I hope you give it a go. It's fun and it's nice and quick, and uh, I think it would make a great card actually. Um, and you could do some smaller ones to make some tags with it if you wanted to. That would be great. So there we have it. Our two little fun cards um and there we there we are i do hope you give it a go um great to have your company hope to see you again soon take care bye